Dr. Doom likes dragons and he likes fire, so it makes sense that he would bring with him today Dragon Fire for your Atari or Sears video system featuring, well, label art that has a dragon and fire. How fitting. Let's go ahead and take Dragon Fire, pop into my Atari 7800 Pro system and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Dragonfire was published by Imagic and carries a copyright year of 1982. It was programmed by Rob Fulop, who is probably best known for programming the Atari 2600 versions of Space Invaders and Missile Command. Dragonfire is a multi-screen action game for one or two players alternating. According to the manual, dragons have driven the royal court from the castle and are guarding the kingdom's many treasures. You are the young prince who has decided to risk his life to reclaim the treasures without the use of of weapons or armors. You dummy. Dragonfire is split into two main screens. The first is the bridge screen, where two types of fireballs, low and high, typically come after you closely together. You press left or right to move likewise down to duck under the high fireballs and the button to jump over the low ones. You can also jump when moving to jump longer distances. You have to be quick to make it to the exit on the left as the fireballs will continuously come after you. Once you enter the castle, you move the joystick to collect the various treasures while avoiding the dragon's fireballs. You can hide in the entrance at the lower right to protect yourself, but you cannot leave the room until you collect all the treasures and reach the exit at the top left portion of the screen. Once you leave the castle, the process repeats with you returning to the bridge to enter another treasure room, which usually contains more valuable treasures, but also quicker dragon. You get seven lives, but lose one every time you touch a fireball. And in this game, you can lose groups of lives very quickly. One nice feature in the game is that you can easily start a new game with the same settings by pressing the fire button once your game is over. Point-wise, you get 10 points for every jug, lamp, or goblet you touch, 60 points for the helmet and candelabra, 200 points for the chest and the harp, and 400 points for the diamond and the crown. The game has four increasing levels of difficulty, with the first being the easiest. Graphically speaking, I thought the game looks very nice for a 2600 game with colorful treasures and nice looking dragons. And while the sounds didn't get in the way, they really didn't do much for me either. I would also consider this a fairly family friendly game. On eBay, loose copies go for $5 to $6, complete in box copies go for $9 to $14, and there was one new copy that sold for $28, and those prices include shipping. So what did I think of Dragonfire? Well, it took me a little getting used to, as when I first played it, I found myself quickly losing my lives on the bridge. But once I got a handle on the controls, I had a mildly entertaining time. I like the graphics and that it is split up into two screens with different gameplay, which is not the norm for the 2600. However, there were times when I felt the controls in the treasure room could have been a little tighter as I often ran by treasures I was trying to collect. In the end, it reminded me a bit of the games Fast Food and Journey Escape, two games I like a lot, but even though Dragonfire adds the bridge screen, I thought the controls in the other two games responded better. So where am I going to rank Dragonfire? Well, it's going to be kind of close to another game I enjoyed with similar gameplay mechanics, and that game is Kool-Aid Man, which is currently at the 32 spot. And while Kool-Aid Man does what it does well, I like the depth of the gameplay that Dragonfire had with the bridge screen and the multiple treasure rooms a little bit more, so I'm going to make Dragonfire my new number 32 ranked game on the system. Dragonfire might not set the world on fire, but it does offer some fun on the 2600. If you enjoy retro-related videos, would you please click the like and subscribe buttons. Also, a special thank you goes out to Willie, host of Arcade USA, who donated a copy of Dragonfire to the show. You can find Arcade USA right here on YouTube and on Facebook as well. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of The Nose for Gamer. Take care, and when on bridges, watch out for those fireballs.